Welcome to the Meddling with Nature audio-only blog. Each week, our friendly crew spends a little time to chat with each other about all the work and thoughts involved in the business of making new friends out of dead things. This week, we're going to give you a little table of contents, beginning to end, all and nothing truncated overview of roadkill taxidermy. It's a large subject, so be excited, kids. It's a two-parter. These two episodes are dedicated to Jerry L. Johnson, my father. He passed on the 24th of March and has obviously had a significant role in making me into whatever the hell I am now. Start away from me. Start, 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 start next to me and go the other way. We were? Which oh, was? my God, every week. Okay, well, I'll start. All right. <laughs> I am very excited about March Madness and how... Everyone is able to congregate in these spaces and really enjoy basketball and watch the fucking exploitation of all these these little kids who are not paid for the time that they spend on the court and if they break their ankle, end up losing their entire scholarship. I'm really glad oh. that we... We're being, uh, way to interrupt. Fuck them. <laughs> Athletes. Yeah, fuck everyone. Athletes are people too. <clears throat> yeah, they're ridiculous. They're students students ruin the world for the rest of us. <laughs> Mike, what are you excited about this week? I'm excited that this upcoming week on Wednesday, I am leaving Cincinnati and for 18 days I'm traveling to California and back via car with two very tall men. <laughs> you like tall men? I, I legitimately love tall men. <laughs> Dan, what are you excited about? <laughs> Short men. So I'm, I'm really glad you can make it. <laughs> I was trying to think of something awkward to say, but I'm glad you followed up. So let's just move on. Well, I'm a short man this week for me. That's my that's my whole game plan. What do you got, Green? Um, well, mine goes hand in hand with Jeremy's. Hmm. <laughs> I'm really excited that UK won the basketball game against UC because they are going to win my bracket. And I don't really know what that means, but I really want to win all that money. <laughs> Nate, Nate, what are you excited about? Well, <clears throat> not what I'm excited about yet, but... <sighs> Jordan. Huh? Hell, Jordan. <sighs> Jordan. <laughs> Nate, explain what you have going on there. <laughs> well, because there was... Explain yourself. There was <laughs> a dick shoe thing, and Mike said they're Air Jordans, and I wanted to interpret that as Mr. Jordans, because then it could still be a dick. And so I go into the German language, and what do you know, but there's... Do you have somebody that calls their their dick Mr. Jordan? <laughs> no, but it, it could be, like, they are Air Jordans. They could, they are Mr. Jordans. They belong to a Mr. Jordan. But I think it's Michael Jordan, right? There are any number of Mr. Jordans. But isn't he the sponsor? I mean, isn't he the face all over Air Jordans? <laughs> well, they don't put his face on there. Well, no, no, not no. anymore. Nonsense. No, Air <laughs> Jordan is a man named Mr. Jordan. It just You're thinking Hair Jordan. Right. That's like Herr Metzger. <sighs> Jordan. That's a computerized weird. I don't. <laughs> that's we above don't, our time yeah, for we, what you're excited about. This we don't week. know what that man is saying. <laughs> He's saying that. Yeah. <laughs> I, 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 <laughs> That's an actual German man. It's not a computer. I really feel like we don't need German robots. <laughs> so this week right. is going to be but, quite... I got a thing. I've got a thing I'm excited about. All right. You go. Uh, God damn it. I thought that was what you were excited no, about. No, you said that was the prequel. You have fun editing this one. We're taking all the intro out. Don't tap the, don't tap the mic. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> 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 real good podcast. <laughs> it's not my fault you don't have the fucking suspendy you know, circus thing. <laughs> it would still have a that? neck cord. It would I've still been have trying to talk cord. Jeremy into that. I love that thing, but it's also like 50 bucks. Right. Like, We've already got, um, already got it. We'll talk about our sponsors at the uh, midpoint of this show, because we've done a few um, alterations to our structure. Meaning that we are just going to not mention that again. <laughs> it's going to be five minutes of silence. And I'm going to play Grandpa on this one, so I'm going to kind of sit, lean back in my non-rockable chair, my fancy calligraphy pen, you got the best chair. and shut up. Did he ever say what he was excited Yeah, he did. Hair. The word hair. Is that what well, you no, no, that, that was a prequel. Cool. So what, what are you actually excited about? Uh, this week, I'm excited uh, that this morning I got to see a bunch of wrestlers in the gym. Excellent. 
Well, this is they're a very, very sports They're very lean, one. they're very muscular. How and old they were they? Are, are very <laughs> aggressively <laughs> touching each other. How old were they? Uh, they were between high school and uh, collegiate. High school diversity. Were there any nobody younger than high school? Nobody yeah. younger than six? <laughs> Can we please move? Get someone moderated. Let's get him cut before we get put on a list. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. At least it'll somebody just, will be listening it'll consistently. It'll just be me and Mike right, yeah. that get put on the list, though, because <laughs> and, we're and the ones who want to know. We're like, and were there any taller. children there? <laughs> okay. Shorter or taller than me? <laughs> It's not so much. <laughs> no, I have to. It's not really. It's not like a criteria. They're all fourth graders. Um, Alright, so. You must be taller than Mike. Since, since we decided to write down <laughs> what we were going to be talking about, we didn't do that, did anybody? I got it right particular? here. Who splashed on me? You driving down the road? Yeah. You having a good old time? Oh, yeah. Top down? Yeah. And, um, name an animal. <clears throat> Coyote. So you see a coyote laying on the... What did you say? Human. Yeah, because you're... We're going to go with coyote. Um, <laughs> you're supposed to be grandpa. <laughs> no, <laughs> so grandpa. Grandpa and a jet ski. We used to stand in the war. Let me with that hot Rod Lincoln. There's no more. I know you've tried so many All right, times. so we're going to go with coyote. <laughs> just There's coyote. Trying. There's coyote no. laying there on the ground. Mm-hmm. It's dead. Yeah. And so you pull over, and you check on it, and it's hot. It's what season <laughs> is it? <laughs> is what anybody looking? Is it the dead of winter? And my hot, hang on, is like, it recording right like now? The block. Okay. <laughs> is there a microwave array like somewhere in your back? <laughs> I'm trying to give the listener... Are no, I really like it's hot. Like, like, it's it's hot. Like it's a, like it's a black good. market. No, this is good. I think that's really no, good. like it's like like it's five. Yeah, maybe not the hot. Part. It's five. Or no, the hot. The, the temperature is already it's written something. as a note. What season is it? What season? Is it? Yeah. What okay. you mean? Hot. I mean, yeah. that's a, that was a legit question. It, it is okay. Well, he yeah, well, he's got a good point. So it's so it's it's hot. It's trust me, I'll guide you there. It's ice cold temperature. It's thirty two below. Zero. And <laughs> Holy crap! <laughs> and I'm not, not getting out of that car. But it's gotcha. 32 degrees. We'll say it's 32 the degrees. Animal 32 is on, degrees. The coyote's on fire. <laughs> it's covered in tar. <laughs> <laughs> Rolling gently down the hill with these little flames. Okay. Got, got the scenario. Okay. So, piping hot coyote. We got a hot coyote on the side road. of the road. Um, and uh, you're going to have to give me some time frames here. What time of day are we talking? Um, we're going to say it's probably around. Oh, we'll say it's. What the fuck is that? Um, it's about 3 o'clock in the morning. 3 o'clock in the morning, okay. What the fuck? From when it's, you were eating. It's probably your snot. Yeah, that looks like it came out of your <laughs> mouth or something. Yeah, it might have been when you were <laughs> eating like a... Like, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm real glad I'm editing this one. Yeah, I almost want to restart the Do whole... Do you want me to start over? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Imagine this. You're driving down the road, mm-hmm. and you see something on the side of the road. <clears throat> Name an animal. Human. Other than human, I'm going to go with coyote. We're going to go with coyote. Okay, coyote. Yes. Because there are certain You yeah, actually see humans procedure. on the side of the road a lot more often, yeah. especially in cities. Mm-hmm. How do you know How do you know it's a coyote? So, so you just see an animal on the side mm-hmm. of the road. Okay, fine. It's not a coyote yet. You know how many... I'm just going to stop you right there. Like, the amount of times, like, oh, my God, Jeremy, there's a fox on the side of the road. You need to go get it. It's a fucking coyote all the time, every yeah. time. I anyway. get pulled over for a fox, and it's a baby deer. I've <laughs> 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 done that once, too. It was a fawn. And I no called, joke. Yeah, that's... Yeah, it was a fawn. I that is sure. not a fox. I'm sorry. I was shaking in my driver's seat like, I'm about a fox, and I pulled over. It was a deer. <laughs> go on with your... I'm sorry, so... So you see, you see a... A pile of flesh a on the side mass. of the road, a bird yeah. mass on the side of the road, and 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 you see it, and you know most people they're wait, driving wait, down wait. the road. And I feel like we should start over, so it's seamless. And you do the don't ask the what animal. Just I go think that that's the, fun. But no, okay. this is fine. Yeah. Let's keep going. Just keep rolling. Yeah, yeah, we do not want to. Like, yeah, if we do this through the whole thing, it's never going to. Yeah, right, exactly. yeah, go. but I feel like it would be just, so just much let, better. Just do you want to do it? No, 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 no. I feel it's so much easier to edit and. I don't care about that. You don't have to worry about that this time either. All right. Just, move. Just try, try not, try not to fall. I lost where we are in the story. Mm-hmm. 
Okay, so you're driving down the road and you see this furry mass yeah. on the side of the road. Now, I'm driving down the road, Dan's driving down the road, Mike's driving down the road. Most people are gonna keep driving, right? Mm-hmm. And, uh, and they're gonna see it laying there on the side of the road. They're gonna think about it, maybe, maybe not. Maybe they're not gonna think about it, keep driving. What, what would you do differently? What would I do differently? What would you do differently? He do differently. Like, would you would you slow down? Would you look at it? Would, are you well, <clears throat> are you gonna are you immediately gonna pull over? Does it you know? I think anybody can you tell from your car whether or not this is gonna be something worth picking up? Well, I actually, have you, a, you know, I think I'm just trying to answer. Oh, just trying to that. answer. I actually have a um a, you know how police lights they have that, that that thing inside the car you can move the light around and I got a grappling <laughs> or like grappling like a crane that's <laughs> similar to that that has a spring action it's pneumatic but it's like <laughs> but nice. I, I I was using that a lot um, but it ended up I was oftentimes getting a lot of garbage in the car <laughs> and dirty diapers especially it's like that's a squirrel and <laughs> and then smear all over the back oh. seat so stop doing that but. Basically what I'll do, if I think it's convincing, and, and it's, it's like Rorschach, right? So when you're seeing something. You to give high fives to people. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> arm in arm. Um, and so I, uh, like, like Rorschach test, everything that is debris on the side of the road to someone who's a taxidermist and especially deals in roadkill, you think it's an animal? Oftentimes it's a paper bag. Or something that was like, that was to, oh, oh, winter time and black shredded tires are the worst, it. worst. For skunks? In between Cincinnati Probably. and Columbus driving back and forth, I, I will a dozen times be like, get an animal, and you get up on it, you're like, that was a tire. Like, it, yeah, so, so many, many tires. tires. Yeah. Mm. What does it look like? Well, black? it's skunk. a it's a black silhouette on the side of the so road, like anywhere from a size between a rabbit and a coyote, and you're yeah. like, but you like oftentimes I think they look what like else crows. Is black? It's, it's just not a, it's a dark yeah. silhouette, yeah. yeah. Especially mm. in the evening or at mm. nighttime, yeah. you just see a silhouette, and you're like, "That's a three dimensional animal." Like that's a, yeah. you get on it, and you're like, "That's a flat tire." That's <laughs> Usually, so what I will do is uh, I'll, I'll see this out of my periphery and uh, go on a level of how convinced I am it actually is a dead animal. Yeah. And then either if it's a street, like a, a, a you know a street that has cross streets, then I'll do a Yui, you know, and and uh, and take a look at it again. Um, or, you know, like, especially if it's non-dangerous, then go ahead and pull off to the side or into somebody's driveway or something like that. It's the interstate, then I usually choose the next exit. Uh, so which makes cross-country trips a lot of fun because I'm always memorizing how far the next exit, you know, like how far back it was. Uh, yeah. cause I've done that a lot because sometimes that'll take you 20 minutes out of your drive. Yeah, you yeah. think it's not fun driving with me. <laughs> well, yes, you, yes, Nate you're, knows. You're perhaps approximately equally unfun to drive with. Yes, uh, because I will, I will stop the car and then we'll w- walk back from an accident. And like, and what that end up being? Piece of shit. No, it was, it was just a really dead animal. It was a really, really dead animal, but it was not the animal I thought it was. Yeah. So, you're driving along, you determine that it's an animal. Yes. Um, can you, you can't tell from the window whether or not it's gonna be worth picking up or not. Not usually, no. So, so now it, it comes to the point of you're deciding how you're gonna retrieve this animal. Are you gonna pull uh-huh. over? Oh, it's, you it's, know, it's, are, are there, are there certain things that stop you from pulling over? Or please. certain things that, yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, I'd say there's Dangerous also, there's also rails. a line between, you can tell, Am I even going to consider going back to look at this, or is it beyond picking up? So you're not like mm-hmm. I'm 100 percent certain I can pick that up, but you're like, ooh, that's worth looking at. But there are some that we can just know by the bloating or by oh yeah stuff like that. Where most people, and I've gotten people who tell me like, oh, there's a coyote, and I have to ask like, was it bloated? Did it look fatter than normal? Did it look something, like a table? Did yeah, it look like a table. Something that they're not <laughs> considering, where they're like, it looked so fresh, but. Something we'd see and we'd be like, that motherfucker's so bloated, I am not even going to go back for that. So there's kind of a fine line between looking at it and be considering, like, What does like, it mean oh, that it's look. bloated? So gas builds up. That's that's what goes on in the intestines. Uh, and, you know, like, basically the insides start kind of eating themselves with bacteria and gas. Gas expands and expands and expands. So bloating happens when it's really been out there for a minute. Uh, and so that means like, like, you know, this is after rigor mortis. This is after something goes out of rigor mortis, which everybody knows from CSI. Uh, and it just looks like this balloon with these long prong legs, especially, I mean, people see deer like that all the time. Um, 
especially if there's not like <laughs> bloating won't really occur if it's it's been run over in the stomach and it's like entrails are out because that's yeah. where where yeah. the business happens. That's where the yeah. gas expansion occurs. Can I digress on rigor mortis? Because I've yes. heard a lot of people say that when something gets rigor mortis, it like turns to stone and you can't bend it. Oh, let's talk about that. No, it's um, it, you have to break it out. That's true. Like, uh, what I think does that mean? That means every every joint. I mean, like especially if we're looking at a deer, you got to put your entire weight on that and just mm-hmm. like go break. Break. So, like, like when you're seeing it on CSI with like human knees and arms, like, no, it, you're not just wiggling that around and breaking that out. No, you put your mm-hmm. weight into it. Um, are you breaking the joint, or are you just breaking the? You're breaking the the the, the seal. Okay. You know, what does that mean? That you're you're breaking out the fused joint. You're not breaking the joint. The joint? I thought it was in the muscle. Yes. So you're, you're breaking out that joint, the so tendon? it's flexible again. You're, mm-hmm. you're stretching the muscle. Yeah, well, yes, and tendons and joint. You want that joint to move again. Is is the is there something sticky in the joint, or is it all in the muscle? Basically, 80, 80, ADP, um, uh, adenosine phosphate, right, the, the thing that makes the muscles work, that, that causes the fibers to contract. Um, I think of it kind of like a little ratcheting system. Every time you're moving, you're, you're, you're controlling certain parts of these muscle fibers, and they're ratcheting on themselves. What happens at death is that ADP is completely lost. You don't have it anymore to cause the muscles to um, to have their functionality. So they all constrict until uh, uh, an enzyme breakdown happens in which they all release themselves. So it's it's fusing. It's like it's like super contraction muscle, like as strong as you can possibly be, and then it all fuses that way because there's nothing to release it. There's nothing to tell it to stop. So if you need to lift a really heavy weight, you could kill a whale, get one of its largest muscles out really quickly, and attach it to some sort of support structure. Not really, really weight. quickly. I mean, it takes a while for this sort of thing to... The thing it depends on the muscle fibers You attach as well. it really quickly, and then it goes into rigor mortis and lifts the weight off the ground. I, it, depending on what fucking muscle you're talking about in a whale, I suppose. The biggest one. <laughs> the biggest one? So low the lumbar muscles? I don't know. All right. Well, maybe. Sure. Yes. Yeah. But I mean, like that's, that's. Well, are you saying that on death, muscles reliably have a very strong contraction? Yes. Okay, so you could do that. And there's also twitching involved, which freaks some people out. Yeah, you could you could tie a whale to something and just let it do its business, I suppose. Yeah. But uh, but it's not like it, it it it. It's 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 a little more more complicated than that, as far as like it. Obviously, when we're looking at something, it doesn't curl up into a ball because every single muscle is tense. It's whatever position it's in. Uh, it's it's uh, the ADP is, is is basically being exhausted and out, and so everything fuses the way it was. There's no relaxation. Rigor mortis is is just basically the stiffening of the position that the animal is in when um, death occurs, which fuses those muscles into place because ADP is is no longer available. It, do, it does not have any living function, so it it ceases. It seizes up. Of course, there still can be some twitching after the fact. Like yeah, they're, they're, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like rigor mortis is is not a, a thing that <laughs> not instantaneous. It's not. In, no, it is certainly not instantaneous. But it's also not a indicator of of way old death either. Like, so if you find a, a, a yote in rigor mortis, that doesn't mean it's like oh, it's been there for days. It's stiff. Um, try and get that shit in your your trunk. Let me tell you. I mean, I'm not talking about deer. I'm talking about mobsters. If you let them out too long. Right. Or get them out of the trunk if you've been driving for a while. Right. So, speaking of getting things out of the trunk, mm-hmm. where were we? We we we, we're, we're we're just, we haven't even gotten out of the car yet. No, we have not. <laughs> so I have this real sweet move. I have this real sweet move in which, like, I've got these. You know, all my seat seat belts are always like the the kind of like thing where you press your thumb down, it releases it, and then you get the chimes, like the ding, ding, ding. So I have like a battle mode, which that chime is my my battle mode. So I like slam on the the seatbelt, throw it off heroically, and then the the chimes are going, those are like war drums, and then I spot the the critter as my my time coming back around, um, get onto the shoulder hazard, the red triangle goes on, and then slow, slow, slow. We want to get as close to that little guy as possible. So that nobody can actually see what the fuck you're doing. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, so you've decided Mike that you're going to pull over. Yeah. It's just so interesting because you and I have never talked about this, but 
aside from the war chimes thing, which is something <laughs> I never thought about, but that's totally yeah. true. Oh yeah. But the, yeah, all the, I mean, I think that's probably what everybody does. It's like pulling up animals. Up. Yeah, you, yeah. I'm like I've done it where I'm backing up to, and I just back up like I'm practically on top of it. Yeah, yeah. I look like I'm fixing the muffler uh-huh. or something, <laughs> but really I'm dra- I'm looking at him. Somebody pulls them looking inside like, a fox's <laughs> mouth. Or yeah. Young man, do you need some help? It's no, like no, I'm good. <laughs> the seatbelt thing is like quick draw. Right? It always feels like I'm pulling out a gun. It's like, and then we're good. You've seen that. Mm-hmm. Oh you yeah, saw yeah. That. Because Did I remember, when, it? yeah, you were like, you're like, take your seatbelt off. Take your seatbelt off. <laughs> you do this with me. Yeah, yeah. feel it. <laughs> it was exciting, and then nothing was there. Yeah, no. <laughs> that was nothing was. Nothing, yeah. was. nothing was. Somebody nothing was stole there. it. Yeah. So um, okay, so you've you've spotted the animal. You've did your circle around. You've stopped. You've jumped out. Before we move on to actually get picking the animal up and putting it in the trunk or throw, doing whatever you're going to do, are there situations, you know, like in our scenario, we've assumed that it's cold outside, the animal's on the side of the road. Um, what if it's not cold outside? What if it's the middle of summer? Okay, well, um, then we go by a size rule. Um, if we're looking at something like a deer, you don't touch it. It's just unless you know that it has been uh, recently killed. That's why why people field dress when hunting. And it's it's yeah. the, because again, when we're looking at bloating and and, and the the kind of um, biological factors that are happening inside the gut with with all that, because basically what what happens, the reason is not just an unpleasant thing. It's like oh, this thing's bloated. We don't want to touch it. It's it's because. As bacteria rises, it gets into the into the epidermis, it gets into the dermis, and this is what is going to cause the fur to fall right out. Yeah, I was going to ask about yeah uh, slipping. What's the time yeah. frame on that? Typically during uh, yeah the warm, warmer seasons. Uh, during the warmer seasons, if you don't put if you don't actually remove the organs of a deer, there's no way to freeze it fast enough. Okay. There just isn't. Uh, but that that's kind of the same rule, and this is why people feel dressed deers. But but in um, like like coyotes stuff like that in the summertime it's not a lot of time it's it's a couple hours okay. in the wintertime it can be a couple days so it's it's a really huge change so wintertime is prime picking oh my god yeah because the fur is all prime too because it's all winter fur gorgeous right, stuff yeah yeah, that makes sense. So, so it really depends on the size of the animal. Birds are a little bit more lenient. Uh, snakes sometimes can be, but it's just there are a lot of factors. Uh, and I do look at rigor mortis. I do especially look at bloating. So usually that's just right air in the in the tummy, of of kind of like pressing down and seeing if there's a separation between the muscle wall and the the skin itself. And it's kind of you know. And sometimes I've, I've dealt with some things. If you catch it fast enough, like. Uh, um, Really furry creatures like like beaver things like that woodchucks they'll be fine but it's 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 a lot more risky yeah um so okay besides the difference in temperature of summer versus winter mm-hmm. is there a difference in the time when you're gonna pick it up you know so like rush you're on your like, way to work and rush hour yeah. as compared to like you're on your way home from the bar. You probably shouldn't be picking things up <laughs> and drinking, but you shouldn't be driving. Shouldn't be driving. Right? <laughs> you're you're the designated driver. By the way, you are plastered yeah, yeah. on your way out so, of so the saloon. So so we've left the bar. You're the DD. You're driving all of our drunk asses home, and you see something on the side of the road. Yes. Ah, well, nighttime is is quite quite easy. Yeah, I mean, you can imagine if you're picking something up on you know the interstate. Mm-hmm. You don't want to do that in the middle of the day when there are cars driving by you at 75 plus miles an hour. Yeah. If you do it at 2, 3 in the morning, you're likely to be able to stop at a time where there's nobody except yeah. for maybe a police officer. And there is there is a lot of rhyme and reason to all this, too. It's like where you're most likely going to find an animal hit is where it cannot escape. Yeah. So these are guardrails, um, yeah. places like that. And so these are places you can't pull over either. And so it's... And especially, like, uh, um, that, that's very much the case with deer and coyote. Mm-hmm. Uh, and a lot of times when you're seeing this little deer crossing sign, you'll, you'll notice that a lot of that is before guard-railed uh, segment of the highway because they just, especially coyotes, because they can't double back. Or they'll try to double back. They get confused because they can't get to the other part of the forest or whatever, yeah. and they go back the other direction, and then that's when they get smashed. Yeah. Um, so there there is a lot to it also, just mm-hmm. of, of the... Yeah, what, yeah, when to pick it up and when to not pick it up. 
Sorry, I'm trying to keep my train of thought. Um, <laughs> um, so, so okay, so you, you've you've stopped at this point. We've determined that you know it's the middle of the night. It's January. You see that coyote on the side of the road. Mm-hmm. You've doubled around or backed up to it or whatever. You've stopped. You get out of the car. You jump out of the car. You're a warrior. Mm-hmm. You're a roadkill warrior. And you run up to it, and you look down at it, and it's not bloated. Its skin hasn't separated from the muscle. Yeah. You know, like, it's good. It's, it's still good. in one piece. It's, it's still good. in one piece. It's, we're going to even say its face isn't crushed. Ooh. It's looking good. Nice. Yeah. So, what what do you do? Do you have a garbage bag that you take with you? Because I feel like I'm a little squeamish about it, so I'd probably take a garbage bag. Like uh, sometimes yes. Yeah. So, I mean, sometimes I have a roll of garbage bags. Other times, no. I mean, I was, uh, and, and a lot of times, especially in traffic, I won't really make the determination if it's good or not until it's already in my front seat. Yeah. You know, like I'm just going to grab that puppy and go. Just throw it in there. Yeah, <clears throat> and then and then kind of make the make the determination later. Um, but I mean, I, I wouldn't. It's not like this this dexterish ceremonial so ritualistic like a, thing. I like really a field don't. Kit. No, I mean. <laughs> he, yeah, Mike does. Tell us about your field kit, Mike. <laughs> I have a pair of rubber gloves in my car and contractor trash bags at all times. I don't want to say that I wouldn't pick up an animal if I didn't have a garbage bag, but there wouldn't be a time when I don't have garbage bags. Every animal I've put in my trunk has a garbage bag. And I do the, you know how you pick up dog poop with a yeah. bag? That's how I do it. I lay the bag on and I turn it inside out and pick the animal up, even a coyote. And then all of a sudden, within, you know two moments of looking at this coyote, I now have a bag of garbage rather than somebody seeing me carrying a coyote to my car. Yeah. That's that's clever. Also the blood. There's just... Is inevitably blood coming out of the mouth or the ears yeah. or if it's been hit somewhere and I just don't have a pickup truck, so... Yeah. If I have to put it in the truck of my Honda Civic, I like to have it the same <laughs> inside of a bag. So, so that later when you go and pick up your case of PBR and throw that in the back of the trunk, it doesn't get covered with coyote big blood. baby. Um... <laughs> <laughs> okay, so Alright, so now that we're through with this 30 minute introduction of how to pick up an animal Off the side of the road <laughs> It's complicated you know? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, so you got it in your in your car You get it home, you take it in You throw it on the slab <laughs> Okay <laughs> Gently lay it down yeah, the table. Like Over my shoulder and just, just, just slap it down <laughs> That's how I do it. And then I drink a beer. <laughs> <laughs> and then you cover your body in the blood. <laughs> Pour one out for your dead coyote, homie. <laughs> it depends. This too, you know, this too depends on... Uh, and, uh, you know, like, we're kind of doing it. And who knows how far we'll get in this podcast yeah, with sorry. this. No, and that's it's fine. That's fine. I think, you know, like, we'll, we can do multi-parts. It, 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 yeah. it, just seemed like, it seemed like an appropriate way to do no, it. No, yeah, once, once we get that... Once we get the critter to the house, it depends on what it is, and depends on how much freezer space I got, and depends uh, on, a, on a lot of other factors. I <laughs> may or may not work with it that night. Depends also. Let's say it's a possum and has fleas. Well, mm-hmm. I've got cats, and those things can be transferable, so I'd like to have all that shit killed, mm-hmm. which means uh, spray down with the flea stuff and put it in the freezer for a week. Mm-hmm. Okay. Whereas I do not have freezer space ever. So when I'm determining whether or not I'm going to pick up an animal, it's whether or not I can commit to the next anywhere from two to seven hours of dealing with this animal because Uh there's no freezing a coyote for me. Okay. So I want to get back to this two to seven hours, but first Mm -hmm. I want to say, how many freezers you got, Jeremy? I have four. Like, Mm -hmm. including your kitchen? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, that's your four. So, One, two, so three, four deep four. freezers or four? Four, four. Deep freezers. Well, one's one's a t- one's part of the, the freezer. Like a regular freezer. Okay, yeah. Three So three. Okay, so you've got one's three. a stand up. One's a stand up. Yeah, yeah. I got yeah. I got four freezers. Yeah. Okay. Um. So some of the some of them you freeze. Um. And in Mike's case, what what is this two two to seven hours? What are you doing in that two to seven hours? The, well, this animal that's making it so that you don't have to throw it in the freezer. I mean, gently place it in the freezer. So seven hours is what I allot to a coyote, which is not what Jeremy... I mean, I would guess maybe three for you. On a coyote? Uh, 
Like from the moment you pick that coyote up until the moment you're like, ah, oh, I can shower and go to sleep. Or uh, oh, sure, it's three, sure, right? So yeah, for me it's seven. Mm-hmm. I mean, from the moment that I pick that coyote up, skinning for me takes a lot longer. Any dissection that I want to do, any it's it's much more rare that I pick up an animal because I don't have freezer space. So a lot of times I want to keep all the bones. I can't freeze the carcass to later process those bones. I have to begin the processing of those bones right then. Mm-hmm. So it's about seven hours from the time that I take out that contractor trash bag until every bit of meat and blood and everything is in the garbage can outside. The bones are in water. The skin is salted. My bloody gloves and tools have been cleaned. And I'm like, okay, I can sleep now. It's about seven hours. So, we won't go too deep into skinning. Um, We won't go into skinning too much. (laughs) Damn it! (laughs) We're just gonna skim the... Anyway, so... so (laughs) Just the tip. Just the tip. (laughs) So you skin the animal. um, Uh, Which is itself uh, an entirely long process. Yeah, I was gonna say, we shouldn't get too deep into that. Yeah, Yeah. that's its... Um, So you skin the the animal. So now you're you're sitting there. um, You've got an animal carcass with no skin on it laying next to it. Um, do you mm-hmm. take the head out? Depends on the animal. Which animals would you leave the head in? I typically would leave the heads of birds in. Okay. Because I like that beak. You know, you don't have to. Um, it really kind of depends on your process. But I typically leave the, uh, well, especially like like with, with um, you know, like like starlings and stuff, uh, not all of that leg is feathered. You know, the tibia fibula is, is, is scaled. Same with when you're looking at pheasants and things like that. So, you know, you, you can't really reverse that so easily. That is just tendons anyway. So you typically leave that bone in. The wing bones are left in in birds, typically. Um, and also the skull, just the brain removed and things like that. So you clean out the eyes and everything else and all the muscle tissue. Um, but with, with any mammal, even teeny little mice, yes, uh, you'd remove you remove the skull. Reptiles? Reptiles, same, but it could go either way with the head mm-hmm. on that. Yeah. Um, leave it in or leave it out or take it out. Mm-hmm. So, okay, so you've got skin, you've got the carcass. Mm-hmm. Um, we're just going to throw that carcass away. No, we're not. We're just, well, you're going to do whatever you do with the carcass. But, I mean, unless we're you want to... Okay, we're going to set it aside. Okay, we're gonna discuss, set it aside we can discuss now. the carcass in another podcast. We'll discuss your, your carcass. Yeah, you yeah, do not... The, no, the ca- don't throw that Can we away. name the coyote Ever. and like just keep using him as an example in future podcasts? We can call him Yotes. Yeah, we'll call him Yotes. Yeah. Yotes, I like it. Yotes. Okay, so, so Yotes' carcass is being set aside. And his skin is laying there on the table. Yeah. So you've got the skin. What are you going to... Do with it now to prepare it for for, for being taxidermy. Now we're going to salt the skin. Mm-hmm. We're going to use non iodine salt or iodized salt. Why? Uh, because there's some theory that the iodine in, in salt changes the, the the pH of the acid. I actually don't. I don't think that's true. But um, I think this is just kind of one of those those ritualistic <laughs> sort of things. And Tanny, like, you must not use this salt, you know. So, so I always just use the, the good old-fashioned table salt from the Kroger. That's not what I was asking. <laughs> what, what? I was asking, why do you put the salt on the animal? I don't care for so much about the iodine. Because otherwise it'll get the hose again. <laughs> um, this... <laughs> The salt, the salt acts as a as a desiccant, or well, not really. Des- it dehydrates uh-huh. the the skin, right? And it's also it keeps it from surface drying. Mm-hmm. Surface drying is a really bad thing because then it locks all those <laughs> all those nutrients in the skin, mm-hmm. uh, and that can also cause a slipping. It's really hard to get acid to penetrate it at that point. So the salt draws all the moisture out, all mm-hmm. the, not all, but draws a lot of the fat out. Mm-hmm. Um, and so it, you need that that process to happen first. Uh, in order for the acid to actually make some sort of impact on the skin itself. Mm-hmm. that That's the next process that we'll talk about. So sometimes this can take a couple days. Yeah. A deer, it, you, like, you'll actually see, like, if you have, like, a rack and salt, um, then you, you get liquid at the bottom of the trough. I mean, it just pours out. Yeah. Um, have that happening at my house right now, actually. Thank you, Graham. <laughs> I was going to mention, I try to describe what exactly that skin is like. I mean, you're talking about 
just the skin, so there's no muscle. Well, ideally, there should be no muscle. Maybe some fascia or connective tissue is, is still on the skin, but there's no blood there. But it, th- there's some fat, and it still is very wet and, I mean... Slippery. Like, slippery, a wet kind of leather. Mm-hmm. And if you leave it in salt too long, it really becomes like a, a jerky. Like it becomes a very, very, very stiff, hard, yes. dried leather just from salt. P.S. Kids, that is what rawhide is. It's rawhide that's only been salted. Well, and, and the way that I, like, something that I feel, you know, from seeing it for the first time, mm-hmm. I thought, oh, it's really similar to, like, chicken skin. Like, mm-hmm. you know, it's not mm-hmm. as soft, I mean, because obviously that's fat, or, like, it's got, like, the fatty stuff on it. This skin like, of, like, a... a like, like a, a chicken, KFC like, or something. Or yeah, like a, yeah. like KFC. Like say you take that fried chicken, that fried chicken. crusty yes. part off. You pretend like that fried crusty part's the fur. Right. And the inside, that's what that's what that this, is. A, that's a very good way. That right. no one who's listening to this is going to be able to eat KFC for like a week. I want KFC <laughs> right now. Actually. But uh, no, that's a uh, that's exactly <laughs> what I was trying I mean, to do. Keep in mind, like that's a very good point. with with that's what you're talking point. about with KFC. I mean, heat does all sorts of really nasty things to skin. Obviously, mm-hmm. frying does too, but. Yeah. When you're talking about that that breaded skin of KFC, that's also what I'm sewing back together for a chicken, yeah. Yeah. right? Like when when we're doing chicken taxidermy, yeah. uh-huh. that is the skin. Yeah. Um, but yeah, go yeah. On. So I mean, that's it's it's similar to that. So, do you wash the animal at any? Like, do you wash it? Best not to. Okay. Unless it's a real bloody mess and it's got feces all over it, mm-hmm. uh, or you know, like there there is such a thing as is it's incisionless skinning in which the animal is hit so badly that you don't even need to to make an incision with a scalpel you actually just <laughs> just start skinning from yeah that's those are really unfortunate circumstances and yeah. they're very messy and oftentimes those need to be washed but you do not you want to keep water away from this as long as possible because yeah. it's just going to mean more salt yeah. more more um dehydrating so typically no I don't wash the skin prior to the uh um the acid time birds birds same thing you don't uh, well I mean you birds can go a couple different ways okay do you want to handle that separately do you um, want to do a separate podcast on birds? It's a huge argument in the taxidermy Mike's, world. Mike's shaking his head, yeah. <laughs> it's a huge argument. I feel like birds are a different. They're just different. Just because, yeah. like, you know, I mean, like, I feel like I could go home right now and taxidermy a bird without any, it, without even consulting either one of you. Yeah, yeah, I think it's important to, yeah. to make you that know. distinction. Because it's so different. Because, because the, the argument of borax should... versus acid and tanning and, and gotcha. all that, it's, it's, birds are... People get real weird, weird, <laughs> real weird about birds. And you're leaving the bones in, like you said, you're leaving the head in, yeah. it's, you're leaving it's, the skull in, it's, it's very different. different. It is okay. very, very different. Okay, so we'll skip over birds. So you've got your salted skin. Yep. Dan, do you have any questions? Uh, no, I'm I mean, you, you interject here at any time. Oh, I'm, 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 I'm kind of taking over this. Oh, hey, you're doing great, actually. Oh, thank you. Um, mostly just because, like, I feel like, I, yeah, anyway. So, okay, so you've got, your, t- your skin, it's got salt on it. It's been mm-hmm. sitting around for however long it needs to sit around. You've yep. determined that it's ready to move on to the next step. Moisture content. All about moisture content. Like, so the moisture content of no, the salt? No, I was just agreeing. Yes. It yes. needs to dry out. It depends yeah. on how many, okay. how long it needs to do that or how many changes of salt. Is there a... So, like, so say someone's listening to this and they've got their skin over there with salt in it. And yep. they're like... I don't know when it's dry enough. Help me out. Do you hear me? Like, I, I, what color should the salt be? What's the texture of oh, it? Oh, good point. Be like, that's a very good question. Thank you. Or? Very good question. <laughs> it should, and it for the should. listener, Jeremy just gave me this look like he wanted to give me a hug. <laughs> <laughs> no, that, that that's, yes, the, the texture. It's about the texture and the color for the most part. Like, you're, you're trying to, to extract all this moisture, grease, and all that other uh, fun stuff as much as you can. Um, and so, if you're able to build a snowman out of your salt, it ain't ready yet. I was yet. gonna use the, I was gonna say snow cone. Yeah. If it's like a it's snow cone like a, kind of consistency, then you exactly. need a change. Yeah. You need, you need, you need a diaper also. change. Yeah. Okay. So, so you want it to be like. You want it to, to be, it's, it's always gonna have some moisture in it. Yeah. But you want like, what, what is really, really, really ideal is like when you're pouring in the new batch of salt, it kind of pools in the center rather than just attracting itself to the yeah. sides or the walls of the... The salt wants to be in there. The salt, if... <laughs> yes, if the salt wants to be in there, let it be in there. <laughs> you kind of want it to remain as salt-like as possible towards yeah. the end. Okay. You don't want to be 
it changing it in you know two hours later it's snow cone and bright red or yeah like and you also don't want to you really it, it, you can keep stuff in salt forever but it just will require other chemicals to relax that salt out and longer story which is my problem. yeah because he doesn't really store them in the freezer he stores them in the and you can't and really I don't store do salt changes either because right stupid. yeah <laughs> and but it still works out the end kind of it does through extra chemical processes it's which, a lot more work but which is a lesson to the listener that you can do this too it's not Something that uh, yeah. things can be fixed. Things can always be fixed. Um, but, uh, but yeah, I think that's why I don't want to chime in with it. Ideally, he's going to tell you what you should do. I'm not even going to talk about how. I <laughs> and every time, <laughs> listen to what he says. And every time you are making a soul change, you should go ahead and take that time to remove more more surface of the skin. Pull, what do you mean? Uh, like uh, because you know how how when a cat gets freaked out, all of its hair stands on end, or when mm-hmm. humans do too. There's there's a layer of muscle. Under that, uh, under those follicles that, that that is making, especially like on dogs and around the neck and mm-hmm. the back, there's a layer of muscle that has to be pulled off, but it really doesn't like to be pulled off uh, mm-hmm. before salting because salt helps separate that. So you want to pull a lot of that. That you want to flesh this stuff. Yeah. Salt acts as a really nice grit too. Right. Um, is there any like? Pressure involved in this process, or you just basically just spread the salt on? Oh, well, there's an entire room in my house that is just a vacuum chamber, and I have a spacesuit. <laughs> oh, excellent. Yeah. yeah, and that really helps. Yeah, I pressure, so. pressure. What do you mean pressure? Well, I mean, just like, you know, like if I'm trying to dry something out, you know, like a, a leaf or something, put it in a book. Uh-huh. And, oh, yeah. you know. oh, I see what you're saying. Well, and also, I mean, forcing salt down into the legs, right? Mm-hmm. Forcing salt into the ears. I mean, there is a lot of, it's not just... You don't just, you don't just shake it on. Yeah, you don't just set the skin in a bucket and then fill it with salt. Right. No, I mean, there is a lot sure. of oh, yeah, that's a good every point. surface of that skin yeah. is covered in salt. You are forcing salt down into the legs, into the toes, right? Like a, like it's a glove. Do you use like a stick for that? Or? Yeah, yeah, all yeah kinds a little dowel rods, yeah. like they look like drumsticks or whatever else. Anything I have around the shop I need to make. A lot of times one thing I'll find that's really useful for tails is is uh, is a, um, a piece of threaded rod because it captures some of that salt in there if you haven't split the tail. Uh, splitting just basically means you split it down the the bones, but there's special techniques of just you know taking the whole you know last part of the, the that vertebrae out um, mm-hmm. yeah. that you really yeah, need a video for. Even a, a foxtail, you know, that you imagine as being a really <clears throat> a, a fluffy kind of big tail. I mean, the inside of that skin is no bigger th- than the diameter of a pencil. You know, I mean, you are really forcing salt down into a yeah. very very narrow, mm-hmm. and you can imagine. I mean, if you get too much salt in there, too big of a clump, all of a sudden it's stuck and it's now super fucking dry. I mean, it's a really kind of finicky. And there's a, yeah, there's a lot of tips of tricks that we could talk about with, yeah. with that part too. But yeah. basically, every single surface must have salt on it. Otherwise, it is, it is, uh, either going to surface dry, which is bad. That makes it really hard to handle later. Or it's, uh, it's, which means it's just not going to tan well. Which surface also dry, you mean like air dry? Air like dry, dry, right. Air. Like, so, so it's just the surface Start of it is outside. dried. Yeah, and the inside just festers there. This is what causes slipping a lot of times. Uh, now we're <laughs> we're now we're 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 well, there you have it. Next, we'll pick up from here and talk more about the process of taxidermy. Hopefully, this will give you a few reasons to ask some questions as well. Let us know at meddlingwithnature.com or why not just tweet us or pound sign to meddling with nature and call us there's a letter wrongly worded please till next time